In this video, I'm going to show you how you can display the current time from the user's computer onto the screen. And we can also set an alarm clock style notification here. In this example here, I'm just doing something that shows you when you should log off after so many minutes. So I'm just setting it here to 7.53.40 p.m. And you'll see once the clock hits that time, we get a notification saying it's time to log off. Let's jump right in here. So I just took this demo scene from the Sinti Sci-Fi Worlds pack. So it looks pretty cool. I figured this would be a nice background. And if I select my canvas, go to 2D mode. I just made this really basic canvas and a little panel using some Sci-Fi UI assets I have. And this is just gonna display the current time and then let us type in some hours, minutes, and seconds for an alarm. We hit set alarm, and then whenever that time hits, it's gonna display this alarm notification panel. So then you'll get this on your screen. So very basic setup, but it should give you an idea of what you can do with this and ways you can take it further to make an actual notification system or a calendar with reminders and things like that. So there's a lot of options you could do with this. Okay, so I'm just gonna disable this again. Now on the UI panel here, I have this time panel. I'm gonna put my script on here. So it's right on this panel itself. And I'll just call this alarm controller. First thing I wanna do is display the time on there. So I'm just gonna make a serialized field. We'll do private and actually I gotta add in text mesh pro first. We'll use a uh, text mesh pro U GUI. And I'm just gonna call this time text. And then I'm also gonna add using system. And this is gonna give us access to a variable type called date time, which stores a date and a time in it, just like the name. So this is actually gonna pull from your computer's clock. I don't need a start method. Let's just go into our update. And now I'm just gonna make a few variables here we're gonna use, so I'm gonna make int hours. And then the way we can get the current hours from the clock is we use date time dot now, which is going to get the current date and time dot hour. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing for minutes. Date time dot now dot minute. And then the same for seconds. And there are different options available built into date time and you can make variable types of date time. So this is a very basic approach to it. And I'm just doing it separate variables like this just so you can see exactly what's going on. But you could look into the date time documentation on the Microsoft site and I'll provide a link below. And it can give more optimal and efficient ways you can do this here. Okay, so now we need to display this text. So I'm gonna use time text dot text. And then we need to turn all of these into a string so I'm just gonna use the newer way of doing it where we can just use a dollar sign, put our quotes, and now everything in here is gonna be our string and if we wanna display a variable, we can just put it inside of curly brackets. So we can do hours, and we'll do colon, minutes, colon, seconds. So now this is gonna display the hours, a colon, minutes, colon, then seconds. So let's just go run our game and see how this looks. And I forgot to drag the references in. So let's drag in time text. Now run the game. Okay, so you can see we have the current time, but you notice we don't have the zeros in front, so it looks kind of off. So we can just change that in the string formatting. The way you do that is after your variable, you put a colon and then we put D2. Using D2 after the colon here tells it that we always want the number to be two digits. So if it's only a single digit, it's gonna put an, a zero in front of it. So let's do the same to each of these. Now, if I go and run it again here. Okay, and now we can see we have a zero in front of the number and it's gonna do that for each one of them. Now the next thing I'm gonna do here is show you how you can set this to use AM and PM to display the time instead of just being 24 hours. So we can just make a variable here. I'm just gonna call this is AM and it's a type Boolean. 
And all we have to do is set this equal to hours less than 12. So all this is doing is, is checking if the hours time is less than 12. We know it's an AM time. And if it's more than 12, then it's going to be PM. And the way to display this, we can do this right in our time here. So let's add a space. We'll add the brackets again to add in a new variable here. And we're going to use our is AM. But what I'm going to do is use what's called a ternary operator. If you're not familiar with this, it's basically just a if statement inside of one line here. So what I'm going to do is put is am inside of brackets just to keep it clean here. Since this is already a true or false value, we don't have to put a comparison. All we're doing is checking if it's true or false. So the way a ternary operator works is after the statement, so something that returns true or false, you put a question mark, and this is what's going to return if it's true. So if is am true, then we want to display am. And if it's false, what you do is you put a colon, and then what comes with false, which is going to be pm. So all this statement does is it says, if is am is true, display this, and if it's false, display this. And now for hours, since this is currently storing 24 hours, so all we have to do is just put percent sign for modulus and add 12. So this is going to divide it by 12 and give us the remainder. So if it's under 12, if it's the AM, it's going to be divided by 12 zero times with a remainder of whatever the number is. And if it's after 12, it's going to be divided once and then it'll give us the remainder. So say if it's 14 for hours, it's going to divide by 12 and give us the remainder of 2 for 2 p.m. Okay, let's go test this one now. Okay, and there we go, it's currently 10.49 p.m. here. And now the next thing is to be able to actually set an alarm. So we need to make a public method that our button can call. I'm just gonna call this set alarm. Now we're gonna need a reference to all of the text input fields in the user interface so we can get the value that the user puts in. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm just gonna do serialized field, I'm gonna do private, and the type I want is TMP input field. And we need three of them. So we need hours input, minutes input, and seconds input. Okay, and then I'm also gonna want a private bool for is alarm set. So this is gonna tell us if the alarm's been set or not. So by default, no alarm set. And then we also want a date time. So we need to store the date and time that the, the user or the player picks. So I'm gonna call this alarm time. And what I'm gonna do is set this to be equal to date time dot today. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna get today's date and time, but instead of the time, it's just gonna get all zeros. So it's gonna get the, the year, month, day, all of the date information, but for the time, it's gonna actually put it as zero. So it starts at midnight. And then what we'll do is when the alarm's set, we're gonna add the time that they pick onto that time. Okay, and we just need one more reference here. So we need the drop down on there, the menu as well. So this is gonna be TMP drop down. I'll just call this drop down. So this is the drop down box that stores AM or PM. All right, let's go write this method here. Okay, so when this is called, what we wanna do is there's another variable type called time span. I'm just going to call this TS for time span. So this is what we're going to create. This is part of the, the date time where it stores a time. You can set in any time. And what it does is it stores it just like you normally see a time. So it'll store it like hours, minutes, seconds. But it's all stored inside of one variable. So instead of having to set each one of those separately, we can do it in one line here where it does actually offer a method we can use called timespan.parse, and it's gonna read in that information from a string. So just like we created our string above here, we can create one here. So inside here, we just have to display hours. So hours input dot text. Then we need a colon, then we'll do minutes input dot text, because we're getting a text value from that, that text field colon, and then seconds input dot text. 
So like I mentioned, what this is doing is it's taking a string of that time. So in this case, it'll be something like 22, 12, 30. And what it does is it parses out these colons and it turns these numbers from a string into an actual number. So it's just a, an easier way of doing this. We could do it manually one by one, but it's much easier in one line of code like this. And now to add this time that the user sets onto our alarm time, all we have to do is alarm time plus equals TS. So now it's going to take the time of midnight stored in here, add on this time, and then we got it set. And now we want to set our is alarm set variable to be true. And now that sets the alarm. So what I'm going to do in update, I'm going to do if is alarm set. And then we want to do also, so if alarm is set and we'll get our date time dot now is greater than alarm time. So now it's first going to check if the alarm set and then after that, if it is, it's going to check is the current time greater than the alarm time? If so, let's display something. So I'll do debug.log alarm. Okay, so we have this all set that we can test it out, but to test it right now, we don't take into account AM or PM. We're just using the 24 hour information here. So let's test that out before we proceed, just to make sure this is working. Okay, so in the time panel, we just have to drag everything in now. So we need our hours input, minutes input, seconds input, and our drop down. And then on the alarm button, we need an on click event. And we need to drag in that script. And let's do set alarm. Okay, so this should be working. We should debug a message. So let's test this out. So it's 10.58 PM. So I have to do 22. 58, we'll do 40, set it to PM. Okay, we're set. And we hit 1040 and there it is. Okay, so our alarm is working. We just have to add the AM and PM checks now. So what I'm gonna do for that is, I'm just gonna make an int variable here called hours. I'm gonna do an if drop down dot value equals zero, which is the first value in the dropdown, which means AM. I'm gonna set hours to be equal to int dot parse. And I'm gonna take an hours input dot text. So the reason I have to do this here is if we look at our game, anything stored in these boxes is actually a string. So it's text. So if I wanna use it as a number, I have to do int dot parse, and this is gonna turn it into a number. Now, one thing to note with all of this in this video, I don't actually show any error checking. So if you created something like this, you're gonna to need to also do error checking where the user can't enter a number that's invalid or enter a letter, any other character. So that's something you wanna think about too when doing this. Okay, so we got this set for AM and then we wanna do else. I'll just copy this line we can do the same thing, but we have to add 12 to it. So then if they enter in an hour, say four o'clock and they set it to PM, we add 12, which is gonna make it 16. Now all we have to do in here is change this to just be hours and that is it. So let's go and test one here. So now I'm gonna do 11, zero, 50. We'll set this to PM, set alarm. Let's see if it pops up. There we go, our alarm is working. Okay, and the last thing I wanna show here is currently if you look here, we can set the alarm to anything we want, but it's always taking in the first day. So we're setting the day to today. Now, if it's a time like right now, like it's 11 p.m. and if you're setting it to be, say you want a reminder at 2 a.m. to tell you to turn off the game, if we set it to 2 a.m. right now, it's gonna set it to 2 a.m. today, which is already passed and the alarm set. So we just have to do a check in here. So I'm gonna do it right here. All we have to do is if date time dot now is greater or equal to alarm time. 
So this means the alarm time's already passed. Then what we can do is let's take alarm time, equal it to alarm time dot add days one. And this is gonna add one day, so this is gonna make it tomorrow. And now just to show this, I can demonstrate, we can do, we'll debug out the alarm time after we set it. So I'm gonna set this not to run full screen. Let's run the game here. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to be 2 a.m. Okay, so it's set for a.m., set the alarm. Okay, so currently, right now, it's January 16th, not 17th, and you can see the alarm is set for 2 a.m., January 17th. So we got that set. The only other thing I wanna add is right now, this time span feature, when we add a time span to a time on a date, it adds in that time to the existing time. So the way this is set up right now is if we click the set alarm button more than once, every time it's gonna add the time in here to the current date, not reset it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this part where we set alarm time equal to date time today, which is zero or midnight time. And I'm gonna set that right at the top of set alarm. So every time we, we press the button, it resets the alarm time to the current day with no time. And now we can hit that as many times as we want. And the only last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make another serialized, make another serialized field, private game object. Let's do alarm panel. Okay, and then when the alarm goes off, instead of debugging, I'm just gonna do alarm panel dot set active true. So now that's gonna display this panel. So let's go to our time panel. I'm gonna drag it in. All right, I'll set it as full screen again. Let's do another demo here. Okay, so I'm gonna set this to be 11.04.30 p.m. Set the alarm. And as soon as 11.30 hits, we get our time to log off message. Okay, so that's it for this video. Like I mentioned, that is just a very brief introduction to this. There is a lot to learn with date time and I'm still learning them too. So if you have better suggestions of how to structure that and how to change it, please leave the comments below. I'd be happy to see all your thoughts on that. And as well, just read through the documentation. You'll find lots of other uses. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.